All right, hello everybody. We are live. Uh, we are going to do some fun stuff today. Uh, we're going to play around with a lot of different shapes. Uh, this is Silver Brush Limited. I'm Warren Flax. This is my mother, Deirdre Silver, the founder of the company. Uh, and as we've been doing for about three months now, uh, we're coming to you about every two weeks, sharing with you various tips, uh, things to do with various different brushes, what brushes work best with what media, uh, what are the best things to do in terms of taking care of your brushes, what are the best things to do in terms of um, using them so that they'll last long. Uh, what we want for you, it's okay, we can leave it at horizontal. Um, or no, you don't want to? Right, it's not We're going to rotate 90 degrees. Go ahead. There you go. How's that? Funny, funny, funny. There you go. We're playing with, uh, playing with video, we're playing with audio. Every time we do this, uh, as you all know, we learn something new. Uh, last time we did it, uh, we learned about the different things that Facebook does and does not allow. That's why we're using a phone now to do the Facebook Live. So we're all learning together, right? This is, uh, this is the world we live in, and it's, it's been a lot of fun. So we appreciate it. Maybe we'll go the other direction now. That's good, too. Oh, please don't get nauseous. You guys didn't realize what a workout we were getting today. So I'm sure you're all seeing a lot of workout videos these days uh, during the coronavirus. Um, Lock in. You thought you were here just for art and for learning about brushes, right. but it's actually a great workout as well, which is great. I could use the workout. Um, so uh, what my mom's going to do today is she's going to talk to you about different unique shapes of brushes that we have at Silver Brush and that you'll see out there in, in the world of, of art materials. A lot of different cool things you can do, uh, pointed, fans. Uh, all sorts of different shapes that we have, unique shapes that are only in our line. Uh, so I think you guys will have a lot of fun. Uh, we're also going to show you some things about how to restore brushes, show you some success stories of brushes that we've, uh, we've destroyed in the last month and then also rescued. Uh, and what I would like from you is some real interaction. So here's what we're going to do, okay? Uh, first of all, we, whenever you, you type in, I know a lot of you are already typing in your comments, thank you for that. Make sure you tell us where you are so that we can say hello and, and share with everybody our, where you're coming from all around the world and around the United States and Canada. Um, and then we're going to start doing a giveaway on our next Facebook Live. Uh, it'll be in about two weeks. We don't have the date exactly scheduled, but we're going to start to give away some special silver brush sets. So I wanted to let you all know now, since you're on this uh, Facebook Live with us, thank you for that, that coming up in a couple of weeks, uh, we're going to be giving away some free silver brush to you uh, through your local uh, distributor of silver brush, your local silver brush authorized reseller. So we're pretty excited about that, and uh, we think you guys will be as well. So with that, uh, I'm going to introduce my mother. So as I mentioned, my mother founded this company 30 years ago in 1990 uh, in the basement of our house, and uh, now it has grown to be a worldwide brand, pretty much built it on the quality of the brushes. That's what we're known for, that's what we're all about. We have 37 different brush lines. So you may know Silver Brush a little bit, you may not know it at all, um, but I doubt anybody on this has all 37. If you do, uh, let me know, you get a gold star. Congratulations. We'll give you something, I don't know, we'll give you something special if you have one of all 37 of our, our brush and product lines. Um, but that said, uh, I'm going to throw it over to you, and okay. uh, you can take it from there. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, whatever part of the world you're in. Uh, welcome today to our Facebook Live. We're delighted to have you. Um, i got a finger in there. Yeah, hold that. Okay. So, what I'm going to show you today is a lot of different shapes that we have throughout our line. So you can get it if you're doing acrylics, if you're doing oils, if you're doing watercolor. You can get a brush that will suit your needs in the medium that you actually use. Yes. So you've got a lot of choices, you have a lot of variety, and you know it, it's not like you have to stick to one thing or, or another, you really can pick and choose what you like. So um, why don't I do this, I'll start with our grass combs. How many of you use a grass comb? Um, let me know, and uh, you know we, we get a real kick out of that, knowing what you do. So I've been playing with this all afternoon. This is our uh, crystal grass comb. And what do you do with a grass comb? Grass comb is a very interesting brush because it has little um, particles. Uh, let me use some watercolor so you can see it actually. Uh, it has particles. Uh, it has the filaments are actually split at the tips. So you can actually use this for grass. You can use it for hair. You can use it for beards. You could use it for 
anything where you need the filaments to be separated. So we have it in the um, crystal series, but we also have it in the wonderful ruby satin series. And this is a series that um, is a very long lasting, very, very durable. Um, this is just gonna last forever. We have people using ruby satin now for 25 years, believe it or not. And this will do the same thing and giving you the split edges on the tips so that you can make those interesting um, gra uh, gradients that you want in the um, painting that you're doing. Now, of course, landscape painters can use them for grass and all kinds of outdoor scenes, as well as decorative artists, as well as still life artists. It really works quite well, and it gives you a nice variety in terms of the different types of looks that it, that it gives you. And as I said, we have two of them. We have one in the crystal series, with multiple sizes, and also in the ruby satin. A, a decorative artist by the name of Peggy Harris uses these almost exclusively uh, for her um, grass work that she does. She does a lot, of, she paints a lot of squirrels and a lot of animals, so she needs that little separation in the hair so that she can get that spiky look. And that's the great fun about this particular type of shape. Now let's go on to some others. We have a lot of angle brushes. I don't know if you're using angle brushes, but uh, angle brushes a long time ago were very, very um, not popular, but they are popular today, aren't they? And what I love about the angle brush is that it gives you a huge amount of control. Now I'm using a Monza brush today. A Monza brush is um, a synthetic mongoose hair, and you'll be able to use that in any kind of medium. Now this is watercolor. Typically we use that in an acrylic color. And what you're going to get is a marvelous uh, control. Because it's a shorter length out, you're going to get a wonderful control with the Monza series. And it's a shorter length out amongst all of the um, Monza series, whether it's a, a fan or, or, or a round or like this is. This is, the, um, this is the angle brush. But notice how much control I have. And you'll be able to get that throughout your painting style. So if you're painting a barn and you need to get real tight, over here, you'll be able to do that nicely with the Monza series. It's, uh, it's a very special series. Um, it's uh, used very uniquely. It really is. So that's an angle in the Monza. Remember, it's a shorter length out. The shorter the length out of the filament, the more control you have, but the less paint it will hold. So that means you have to go back into it several times in order perhaps to fill up the space that you have. So that's the Amanza series. Hold on, a couple questions, a couple sure. hellos, no questions yet. Hello. But some hellos. Hello. And Noeletta Cardenas is here. Hi. And she is in Tri-Cities, Washington. Hi. And Carol McCready in Clarence, New York says hello. Hello. How and are you? one of our silver brush educators, Samantha Williams Chapelsky, is checking in from Edmonton, Alberta. Oh, the beautiful area. Just a beautiful area. And Isn't Vicky that? Ojeda in California. I remember Vicky from last time a couple uh -huh. weeks ago. Actually, I remember no Noeletta's name also. Uh, uh -huh. And Carol for that matter. Welcome. Uh, Anjan Day is here. And Anjan didn't type where she is. Um, but hello, Anjan. Thank you for being here. And TJ Alipio. Well, welcome. I'm so glad that you're joining us today. It's a pleasure to see you. Thank you for joining us. And TJ might be in the Philippines. His uh, Facebook profile says the Philippines. So hello nice. to you. We have a new silver brush educator in the Philippines. We have a great, uh, great customer who sells silver brush at Art Bar in the Philippines. And uh, also Craig Drew, Carrot. Drew Europeo is now working with us. And she's in the Philippines. She does a great job already representing uh, Silver Brush. So, TJ, if you see any of her work on Instagram, uh, she does a great job. Notice I've, t I've done a uh, double uh, double load on the on the big uh, fan, oh. the big angle brush. I've got uh, two colors on it, and you got a, a rainbow look. Now, if I had if I had real talent instead of just being I uh, just rolling around here, I would actually show you that this you could even tri load this. So here I've got two colors on this one brush, which really uh, gives you a lot of uh, flexibility uh, in what it is that you want that you can do. Look at that! Isn't that great? Isn't that fun? So uh, that gives you some more variety 
in terms of the different uh, brushes that you have. And of course, the larger the brush, the more paint it'll hold, and then, you know, you can get a lot of uh, uh, differences on the brushes itself. But uh, let's go on and show you some more. Another hello from Nurain in Cairo, Egypt. Oh, Nuran, hello, oh. Nuran. Oh, how wonderful to hear from you. She's a beautiful artist, she really is, inside and out. She's got wonderful talent. I'm very familiar with her work. She's done some photography from, for us. She's a great talent. We're thrilled to have you on the call today. This is a round, and uh, this is in our new short-handled Brissalon series. It's new. Uh, what's great about Brissalon is that Brissalon, it's always going to be durable and very hardworking. So no matter what you do to it, nothing's going to happen to it. Notice it goes right back into its original shape. It's a very sturdy, durable brush series, and it's, it's just going to keep on ticking forever and ever. So well, I've gone from the angle and I'm now doing some round brushes because I wanted to show you a variety. But in the angles we also have, you know, ruby satin, which is something I believe I showed you in the Monza. But we also have that in the crystal and we also have it in our wonderful new Silver Silk 88. Um, these are fun uh, brushes to use. Uh, the Silver Silk 88 is fantastic with fluid acrylics any of these light acrylics that have come along that need a little bit extra to hold it on the surface. There's nothing like silver silk to, um, to really hold a, a wonderful, wonderful, oop, this is a, okay, we got it all on the other side. Um, mm -hmm. But notice I've got a double load on this as well. Um, this is a very uh, absorbent paper and I, I'm doing, I'm working with watercolor, which I really should be using some fluid acrylics. I think it would work a lot better, but that's okay. We'll we'll just we'll just take it from there, and we'll make it work. So this is there. You go. Another you hello. Go. This is uh, Heather Fubair. She's in um, Danville, Indiana. One of our silver brush Welcome. educators Welcome. is here. Hi, Heather. Welcome. Welcome. And that's uh, that's a little bit of with our uh, silver silk. 88, and that is the angle on that. Um, we're still working with the uh, rounds, and I've got rounds in our Bristolon series. I have them in our Golden Natural series. Uh, Golden Natural, I think we've shown you last time, is an, a really an incredible brush. It's got, um, it's got a large amount of animal hair, which is very, very absorbent, and synthetic fiber. So what you're going to have is a, a huge amount of color. It's going to be able to put on the filament and you're going to be able to paint with it. Now notice how thirsty this brush is. It holds a huge amount of color and that is because you've got a unique blend of hair. And, and this, is the, this is the round. Notice how much it holds. You can see how dense the color is on the surface. And um, that's because of the enormous absorption of this brush itself. Now this is going to be a very, very long lasting brush and it's very, very durable. So you kind of can't ki kill it, you really can't, but you can always try. I mean, you know, that's, that's how we make money, right? All right. Um, so let me move on. I love that brush. That's one of my favorite brushes uh, we've come out with in the last few years and I, I, just, I just know that you'll love it too. You'll, it's just very unique how much color it will hold. Remember, the longer the length out, the more paint it'll hold, but a little less controlling. So if you want it, if you need a controlling brush, you really want to use something with a shorter length out. All right, let's move on. We have lots of different shapes here uh, in lots of different series. Um, we have a, something called our Ultra Mini Series, and I have a couple of brushes in our Ultra Mini Series. This is our um, ultra, ultra Round, or Design Around, we call it. You notice how long the length is, but it's got that nice big fat handle, which is very, very comfortable to hold for over a long period of time. And a lot of people who do detail painting love this series because they can get into it and they can paint an Easter egg. They can paint the watch that they're going to wear or give as a gift. They can paint anything that needs very, very soft, very, very small amount of paint and very concise. So who, who is that? It's the botanical artist. It's the botanical illustrator. It's the, um, it's the uh, Audubon folks who do a lot of birds and a, and a lot of outdoor animals. Um, you know, one of my favorite artists is a, a, an animal painter. And all of her, all of her um, artwork is done 
with these little teeny brushes because she needs that little bit at a time. She doesn't need a whole bunch of paint all at once. She wants to get in there and do the detail painting. And that's the great thing about Ultra Mini. Um, one of the fun shapes, we're showing you lots of different shapes today. So I'm going to show you this shape. This is called a teardrop. See that angle? Isn't that fun? Um, this is a shape that when I always demonstrate, I show it painting a watch face. You can, can you imagine being able to paint a flower on a watch face or something as small as this? We had somebody send us a picture of them painting with rice, if you can believe it. You paint it on a, a little thing of rice, and they paint it, of course, with the Ultra Mini. You have to use something that's going to get on the surface and not take up a lot of space and do what you need it to do, and that's the great thing about Ultra Mini. So here I've got very, very, very small, 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 small little detail and because of the angle on the head that you get with this particular brush this teardrop guess what you can see everything you're doing so whatever detail you've decided to put on your painting you could see it with this little teardrop so you've and got so, a couple of good suggestions here of, sure. of ultra mini users uh, Naran uh, again from Cairo uh, she points out that she loves the ultra mini and she uses it a lot with black velvet Mm -hmm. And then uh, Noeletta uh, mentioned she uses the Ultra Mini for animal eyes. Absolutely. Great for animal eyes. Great for animal hair, too. If you want to get that little spiky look all over here, yes, take a look online. Go online and look at Peggy Harris's work, and you'll see that all that little spiky look, either she's using our grass comb, which I've just shown you, or she's also using the Ultra Mini brushes. Yeah, she's a great artist and she's done some wonderful things. So that's our little, I think that's one of the really fun shapes. And if you can tackle that and you can do something with that, send us a picture. We love to see things like that because it, it just shows your ingenuity also. So we're going to take, give you a clean surface. So duck you feathers. There you go. Heather mentioned she uses it for duck feathers. Perfect for duck feathers. But so is a cat's tongue. So let's show you the cat's tongue. Where are you cat's tongues? There you go. I've got a couple of cat's tongues, and that's what um, the, that's what this was originally uh, done for. This was um, this shape was originally designed for folks that are wild fowl painters. They needed it so that they can do feathers, uh, duck feathers, and that's who uh, this was originally done for. Let's see if I can get some uh, paint on the uh, silver silk. But what's really great about this is, and you should be able to see. that I'm making little duck feathers. Oh, look at that. See Naran that? also mentioned she uses the Ultra Mini with cactuses. Oh, nice. For like the details of the thorns. Very nice. Very, very nice. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the great thing about having experience with something. You can try it and experiment with it and continue using it for anything you want. Notice how they look like duck feathers. That's what the cat's tongue was originally designed for. And today, people are using it for many, many different things. They're using the side for a line. They're using the flat. They're using every single part of the brush. This is a very, very versatile brush. It's a cat's tongue. We have it in a red sable. And we also have it here in the Silver Silk 88. And of course, we have it in black velvet. That's this big guy over here. Black velvet is just uh, for 100% watercolor. I never recommend it for anything but watercolor uh, because of the nature of the hair. It really has to stay in watercolor. It's not, you shouldn't put it in fluids, you shouldn't put it in acrylics, and certainly not for oils. And, and there's so many other things out there that you can use it for. But if you look at that, you're going to see you'll be able to make some big, big feathers with uh, the black velvet uh, oval wash as well. And we don't call this a um, cat's tongue. We call it an oval wash, but it's it's a cat's tongue as well. So notice that beautiful that beautiful uh, line work also. But remember, this is the silver silk, so you get nice little um, feathers from that. So suppose you're not doing feathers. Suppose you're not, you're doing something entirely different. You're painting uh, a portrait. You're painting someone's um, you know somebody's children or their animal or what whatever you're painting. Um, these, these brushes will give you that much more variety to make the, the painting look that much more interesting. 
Um, the Cat's Tongue is a great series, and um, we are uh, very excited by it. It's very versatile and very durable, and I think you'll enjoy painting with it as well. Um, that's two of the Cat's Tongue. There's also one in a red sable, which I forgot to bring to you today. Um, here we have another brush, and let's just pause for a minute and show you a unique tip. Now, you may have seen me do this before, but I'm going to show it to you again. So I have this brush. I have two brushes here I'd like to show you. Um, this is in the cleaning uh, venue. And uh, Kira, would you bring that up closer? So the first one I'm going to show you is this one. This, this poor little guy has had a very hard little life. It got all crushed and, and, and see the hair is going all over the place. It could be that somebody took it and put the, the cap back on it, which I, I, I've mentioned in the past that you should take the caps once you get them home and throw them away. Okay? Don't ever keep them. Don't ever keep them and don't ever put them back on the head because it'll ruin the head of a brush. Whether you put a brush in that's wet and it can get mildew and, and get cruddy or you just put the hair down and then you, you feel as if, oh my goodness, I've, I've ruined the brush. But you really haven't because there's lots we can do to fix it. The other one, Warren took this the other day and he filled it with paint and it's been like that for a couple of weeks. But he also did this brush. He also did this brush exactly the same. And look at this brush. I worked on this this morning. Took a little bit of time, but I got all the paint out and I, I got it completely pliable and we can absolutely use it for artwork. Isn't that great? But this is like, you know, this is dried paint on here. So there's not much you can do about it, except for this. This is our, my little teapot and it keeps the water boiling hot. And just be careful not to hurt yourself, Kira. Um, so what I'm going to do today is you're going to have to believe me that the paint comes out of this and it looks like this after I worked on it for a little while. Okay, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time, but it's going to come right back again and be nice, soft, nice and soft. Maybe in, when you come back in two weeks, I'll, I'll have this all cleaned out for you, but it won't take two weeks, I promise. So this is the one that's going all over the place. What I'm trying to do is to show you how you can preserve your brush so you continue reusing it for many, many years to come. We know that you're, you're using your hard-earned money to buy these brushes, and we appreciate it very, very much. These are tips and tricks that you can use to make your brushes last over many, many years. And we do have people who use our brushes for 10, 20, some of them 30 years going on, 30 years. So we know that this works. So listen to me and watch what I'm doing. So I'm going to go over here. This pot is really hot. You can see the boiling hot water. It's a little teapot. And I did not work on this brush before, and I only hope I'm not lying to you and it works again. But notice that with the boiling hot water, it goes back into its original shape. You see that? That's all I did. I didn't stir it like soup and left it in there or anything like that. I just did it a couple of times. And here we are. Here's the brush, okay? Now this is a wonderful brush. I might as well tell you about this. This is, a, um, this is a new brush that we put in the line and the name of this is Ultra Round. This has got a nice fat belly and a nice long tip. Which would, series? This is in the Golden Natural series. The item number is 2031S. And look at that. You can go right back and continue using it. So you haven't wasted your money. You can still use this brush to paint with long after you thought you couldn't. And what I love so much about this particular brush is the long, 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 long tip. And you will be able to do wonderful, wonderful line work. You'll be able to use uh, for anything that you need uh, a, a lot of paint and you need to have a very, very sharp point. So this is a needle point and look how beautiful that is. Remember what it looked like before when I showed you the hair all over the place? But look how beautifully it's performing now. And that's a trick for you to know. So take that brush that you think that you'll never be able to use again and try it my boiling hot, pot, hot water uh, method. It has to be really hot, and uh, as a matter of fact, it's so hot, it's uh, sending up steam. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that plug out of it right now so that uh, it stops heat, heating up the office because it's getting really warm in here. And just so that you know that uh, you can go right back and use this. But this is a marvelous shape. This really is this ultra round. It's, it's fairly new in the line. We also have it in 
the Silver Silk 88. So are you using fluid acrylics? If you're using fluid acrylics, this is the brush that you need for that because this works just beautifully. I'm just using a fluorescent acrylic because I wanted you to be able to see the brush in performance. But the problem with these acrylics is um, they're very lightweight acrylic. And, and now I understand why they were so inexpensive. Sometimes you have to understand why something is cheap. Now I understand. But I, what I liked about it is the fact that it is a fluorescent and the fact that you can see it out there. If I didn't use something that was bright and shiny, it would be very difficult to see. But what I love about these brushes is that it's got this long, long, long tip. And I'll go back to watercolors with this. And it just keeps on holding its shape and giving you that nice, nice tip. Look at that wonderful tip. Isn't that marvelous? Uh, so it's a long tip, and so is this in the Golden Natural. So they're the same shape. But we also have it in Ultra Mini. This is the, we call it Designer Round. That's also an Ultra Round. It's the same thing. But what's great about this is, this is a size two, is the fact that you will be able to get into any of these small little crevices and <clears throat> go in and out into very, very small detail area. So what happens if you're painting a sunflower? or you're painting a tulip and it has a stamen and it has, you know, the, the things in the middle and little, little petals and all of that. And you need something to work with, but you don't want to have a big brush. You want to have something that'll do a little, little uh, fine lines and, and, and little detail. That's what this brush series is perfect for. And, um, you know, it's been in our line since 1995. That's how long it's been in our line. And it's just, the most awesome brush. I put it on a nice big fat handle. This is a comfort grip handle. And uh, you could just paint with it all day and not get tired. That's what's really important. So that you're, you have a real comfortable way of painting with, uh, with this particular brush. And I love this one. It's, uh, it's a joy to behold. And um, I always have a lot of fun painting with the Ultra Mini series. I've got a good question, Mom. Just sure. going back to the boiling water technique, yeah. uh, Nuran asked, um, would that work with old oil brushes that have yes, dried paint will, on them? Yes, it will, Nuran. Up to about a year. What you want to do is you want to put the brush like this into about halfway up the ferrule. It's, uh, we're putting it halfway up the ferrule. By the way, since I saved the dirt from the other brush to show you, that I'm not lying. I really did do it this morning. And yes, put it halfway up the, in the middle. What you have to do with oil color is you have to melt the paint inside the ferrule. Because what happens is the hair starts going all over the place because the hair is in the ferrule. So you've got to melt that. You've got to get the, the brush halfway up the ferrule and start getting it to melt. Once you do that, let's do this. Once you do that, you'll be able to start getting the paint out. Now, I still have, this is going to take some work to get this out of here, but it's going to come out. Um, yes, you absolutely can use it for oil color, and it's going to take a little bit of work. Neuron, you should know better than to leave your paint in your brush, because you're an old professional yourself. But, um, and I'll give you a pass, my dear. Um, but, yeah, it'll, it'll come off. It just has to melt, it has to take time, and it'll come out. What's important for you to know is that as you're putting it into the oil color, you're going to see it start to melt in here, and you're going to see rainbow colors coming out. Now, that's up to a year. If, you, if, if it's no older than a year, we could probably guarantee that that's going to come out of the ferrule. If it's older than a year, I can't guarantee anything. I really can't. Because once it really sets in there, it's like concrete, and it's really hard to get it out. We'll get it out of here, too. I'm, I'm not too concerned. Too much. <laughs> so okay. we have a question from Anna Garcia. She's sure. in Italy, and Welcome. she is saying that uh, she'd love to get the Golden Natural, oh, and wants wonderful. to know where she could get that in Europe. Uh, I believe we have um, a couple of distributors. We have one in uh, Germany, and we have another one, Arte Miranda, in Spain. Uh, and and um, you know, you may be able to get it from them, and they're selling to retail stores throughout Europe. So. That would be something that our administrator, Kira, would have to let you know about and uh, get you know right right to us so that we can get 
you in touch with those two distributors so that they Jackson's, can help you. Jackson's would be more oh, likely uh, with Golden Natural. Absolutely. Arte Jackson's. Miranda just got started. Yes, both Jackson's in England and Arte Miranda in Spain, and there's someone else in Germany as well. So uh, more and more of our brushes are getting to the European market, and um, we're, we're very excited about that. But let's go on to another shape because we've got, you know, lots more to show you. We've got our triangle. We have a deer foot. We have, oh, look at that. Lauren brought me a cat's tongue in a red sable. I have to tell you, um, I know somebody that is using our red sable cat's tongue. Now she's using it in her 30th year. And um, she was always a great uh, wildfowl artist. And the work she does is so magnificent. And uh, I just wish her good health and uh, happiness. And um, but she is a. Notice how you get these nice tips on this, so that you get that you do can do the feathering. So whether you're working on a, a wildfowl decoy or you're doing a flat uh, project, you can get those wonderful, wonderful tips. Uh, I'm not using the right paint. I should really be using oil color, but um, this is what I have right now. And um, this is pure red sable. It says so right on the handle. It says sable cat's tongue. So notice how beautifully this holds color. Remember, inside the, each one of the filaments of a pure red sable is a hollow tube, just like our natural hair, and it's going to absorb color. So look how beautiful the, um, the tips are. You'll be able to do any kind of work that you like like that. And if you haven't thought about doing wild fowl or animals or, or anything like that, it gives you an opportunity to look at it and say, gee, I bet I could get it with this particular series. So let me move on. We've got our triangle, which I'm still trying to work with, and we have a dagger striper. We have four dagger stripers in our series. The first one is uh, our bristolon, which uh, if you've been following us, you know that it's a, a stiffer filament, and it's always going to hold its edge, and it's always going to be just as stiff as this all the time. We also have it in ruby satin, which is a little softer, and very, very pliable. Feels a lot like the old um, uh, endangered species, the uh, mongoose hair. But it's a synthetic fiber, so you won't have any issues with that at all. And then we also have a uh, dagger striper in our Silver Silk 88. Silver Silk 88 is a very unique series because it has a gradation around the filament itself, so it's going to hold color. Okay. And then, of course, we have black velvet. Black velvet. Hmm. Okay, black velvet works beautifully in watercolor, and I'm sure that somebody who actually has talent, not me, could use some beautiful strokes. Somebody like Neuron. And you get beautiful, beautiful dagger uh, strokes with it, with these, these little curv curlicues and... and uh, that make some wonderful, wonderful looking uh, strokes. Let's do that. There you go. Just use the right product for the right brush. Be nice if I, I did that myself, right? Okay, so this is the um, Ruby, this is the Ruby Satin 3 8 inch dagger striper, and um, we just love it. We really do. It's uh, it's something that's going to always do exactly what we want it to do, which is give us really interesting strokes. We just keep on going. All right. Now, we have fan brushes. I've, I brought out four fan brushes to show you today. We have our Golden Natural Fan. We have Silver White. We have our Monza. And we also have our little teeny weeny little Ultra Mini. What's that for? Well, that's, you know, you want to put um, grass on a little um, a, a little area in your painting and you don't want to have a lot of paint look at that you can just do a small little area and do get that get that area that you want to cover so lots of lots of alternatives look at that nice grassy work isn't that great okay that's our, remember the smaller the brush, the less paint it holds, the, more, the longer the hair, the more paint it'll hold, but the less control you'll have. This was one the that Ron I was working with. The dagger works really well with leaves. Oh, great with leaves. Beautiful leaves, beautiful, beautiful flowers with daggers, absolutely. Right. Let's see if we can get that. 
This is our larger fan, and the larger fan, once again, you get all kinds of interesting strokes. With this is this is a golden natural fan, and basically you can get cross hatching. You can do anything you want. Um, so many things you can do with this that gives you an overall pattern. And um, that's the fan. The fan is unique shape. Uh, for a very long time, it was it was in, was out in terms of popularity. Today, it's back in again. So we put another fan into our Golden Natural series. We also have um, the Silver White. Uh, this this is a very nice series if you're being um, thrifty and you want extremely fine quality. Uh, this is our Silver White series and it really holds a huge amount of color. Remember, we're different from a lot of other manufacturers with our synthetics because our synthetics we use multiple diameter filaments. So if you find that you you can't get a moisture to stay on our competitors lines, it's because they're using the same size filaments. Whereas we use multi diameter and you get a lot of friction on that filament that holds a tremendous amount of color. Very big difference in the quality of synthetic filaments, it really is. So that's some fan brushes and we have we have rounds. We also have our little deer foot. How are we doing in time, guys? Uh, we're, we're getting down to it, so I don't know that we're going to get to everything. All uh, right. Great question. Noeletta asked, which is the stiffer fan? The I use HB acrylic. Okay. Uh, I would say the stiffest fan we have here right now would be our Monza. Because remember, the shorter the length out, the stiffer it is, and the less, the less um, moisture it's going to hold. But it's going to be stiffer, it's going to hold the shape. Uh, a little bit longer is the Golden Natural, but that is softer. So the stiffest that we have is the Monza series over here. And if you need something to work in oil color, and you want to use it for oil color, I would recommend our Silverstone fan brushes, because that is a, a white hog bristle, and um, that's something that you'll be able to work in oil color very, very easily. Let me just show you a couple of dots with the deer foot before we're down to the wire. Deer foot is nice too because you get little marks where you may not have been able to do it before. So what happens if you're painting pussy willows? What happens if you're pa painting stamens in a flower? But you want to do it quickly and you want to do it easily. Look at that. You can do that with that little deer foot. We only have the one. It's a very small size. It's just a one quarter, but it's really versatile. And I, I like to use it in um, lots of different uh, small areas where I just need a tiny, tiny little dot, a tiny little bit of paint, and there you go. That's just what I'm doing over here. So it, that's the, the deer foot. That's number 8816S, and uh, you can get that at your local reseller. All right, and um, we're getting down there. Triangle. Triangle. Okay. Triangle. I'm going to let Kira do that for oh, you. No. Yes, I'm going to let Kira do you do that for you because guess what? I'm not that great at it. And I really want you to have a good experience. So let me see if I have a clean space over here. Here's this. And let's see, do we have another? Yeah, we can do it right on here. So Warren, let's hold the, the uh, paper over here. And here, Kira, this is some watercolor. Okay. Kira's going to show you how to use the, um, the triangle. This is a very interesting shape. You know why it's fun? Um, because you, there's so much variety you can do with it. So look what she's doing. She's making petals. Look at those beautiful petals she's making for her flowers. There are more videos on Instagram with wonderfully talented individuals. Like uh, We have a friend in Singapore that is doing this, and she's making... Uh, beautiful flowers with her triangle brush. Look at that. It is such a unique, unique shape. It really is. And it, these, uh, this is something that just absolutely uh, can make it that much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the ruby satin. That's a little softer than the uh, bristolon. But I also came out with it in the bristolon series also, which is our stiffest synthetic fiber. And 
There you go. Now she's making more petals. See, she's getting a little. You know, she's getting a little. It's, it's a lot of fun to use this brush. If you have the chance to play with it, and that's all I've ever done with it is play. I'm not a professional artist, but I have a lot of fun with it. There's so many different marks that you can make, and leaves, and petals, and it's just so beautiful. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Here, try it with the bristle on. See the difference in the feel. Do you want to dip that in the hot water? In the not hot water. Yeah, I just did. Yeah, in the not hot water. Yeah, here you go. And now she's going to show you with Bristolon series, which is a stiffer fiber. And that's going to hold up very, very well over many, many years. And this is the new short handle Bristolon series. Let's show that up close. So she didn't know she was going to be on Facebook Live I didn't today. I know I would be on Facebook Live today. Hi, everybody. <laughs> She's got some pretty flowers coming out also. A uh, new person says hello. Tarun is here from India. Oh, hi, Tarun. Hey, How everybody. are you? Tarun is our distributor in India, yes. AS International. So hi, all those welcome. Of you in India, uh, you can check out his website and get uh, all your silver brush from him. And today we're showing the different types of uh, brushes. Beautiful. Thank you, Kira. And that is the bristle on triangle. And I still have to get lessons in the triangle and um, to be able to be more proficient at it. And um, that's a lot of different shapes. Uh, I did miss showing you the uh, soft, uh, what is the name of this? This is a soft, soft curve. curve. Yeah. And this is rounded on one side and square on the other. So you'll be able to do a lot of different marks with this. Um, you'll be able to do round edge on one and a flat on the other. And that gives you a lot of alternate um, marks to make as well. And let me show you that that shape. Isn't that fun? Yeah, that's something that's going to be wonderful. What's that uh, called again? That is a soft curve and that's yeah. in the Silver Silk 88 series. And then of course we have the liners. I only, I only brought them out so, to show them very quickly. And what's one of the most popular things that people ask when they go into a, an art material store where you should be going back to now that uh, people can go into stores and what can I use to sign my name? And what you want is something called a script liner. And we have many, many script liners. We have it here in the Golden Natural series. Here we are in the Bristolon series. We have this in a long handle Bristolon series. We have this in Red Sable. We have this in Ruby Satin. We have this in many, many different uh, Black Velvet as well, as well as Red, uh, Red Sable. So we, this is an extremely popular brush. And if you don't have one or two, maybe three or four in your, in your paint box, it's very important for you to do that. Now, um, stores are reopening. Um, ten of the artists and craftsmen stores are opening around the country. Um, Azel's Art down in Texas is opening up, and I think they are open. Uh, we've got stores from Miami all the way up to uh, Oregon and Washington opening. And uh, please, uh, uh, go to your brick and mortar store, call them. Uh, Wet Paint is open in um, St. Paul, Minnesota and support your local store. We need them, we want them to open again, up again, and we need them to stay in business. So support them, please. All right, Thank so you. again, remember, uh, in a couple of weeks here, we'll get out the note on Facebook, and we're gonna do a giveaway. We're gonna give away a couple of silver brush sets uh, for those of you that are live with us in two weeks. Uh, so keep an eye out for when the next Facebook Live is with us. Uh, we appreciate you all so, so much. Thank you so much for participating and checking in with us from all around the United States and around the world. Around the world. Uh, thank you again, and we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Good to see you.